Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, often tasting rare and exotic whiskeys, often American whiskeys that are rare and exotic. Well, Wild Turkey, 12 year old, 50.5%, so 101. This is for the Japanese market, 2022 bottling. Now, on the outside packaging, there's no reference whatsoever to the Japanese market, which is very interesting here. This is the distiller's reserve. And then when you open this, I think very, very nicely done packaging, you open it up, you pull out the bottle here, and you will actually see that there is Japanese writing all over the place. <laughs> does say wildturkey.jp. Um, the interesting thing, there was a nice little, on the, on the um, capsule here, there was the nice little thing here, 15 point. It's four points. Oh, but that's all right. So um, I don't know. It's actually in Japanese. And um, had I bought it in Japan, which I didn't, I would have received an extra 15 point bonus for something. Who knows? All right. So I am going to compare it, of course, to the standard 101. Now, over here in Germany, this costs about, I can get it for 24 euros. All right. So I can get literally four of these bottles for the price I paid for this one bottle. Now, some of you are going to say, Jason, that's a bargain. You paid 98 euros for this? I did. All right. So we have a company over here. Um, you know them maybe as um, whiskey.com. Oh, come on, Jason, a little bit more. Um, I know them as whiskey.de, Deutschland for Germany. And um, they had them on sale for 98 euros. So we have over here in Germany a nice little WhatsApp group where if there's a shop, um, so I will buy the bottle first for me and then I'll share it with the people in the shop. Not that they're quicker and they, the, the shop sells out because we call ourselves shop killers. Uh, at least I call the group shop killers because as soon as a good offer is there, we just go and buy everything the shop has. And this was sold out fairly quickly if I remember correctly. Let's see here. Um, oh, okay. Whoa, I'm sorry. It's still available. All right, it will be available in another three days. But the first, the first shipment they received, they were sold out. And the second shipment, um, we'll see if that's sold out very quickly or not. Um, 98 euros, which is good because other people in Germany have tried to re-import it back from Japan over here. So we go from um, Kentucky to Japan, from Japan to Europe. And they're, they're, they want 149 and 169 euros for that, which I think is <laughs> um, just funny let's just say that ridiculous so now i am going to read the back of the box here and it's exactly the same thing on the back of the label here um born from the father and son distilling genius of jimmy and eddie russell wild turkey 12 year old distillers reserve is kentucky straight bourbon at the highest of the highest character wonderful jimmy and eddie great people all right now this is actually the third generation involved as well um, this special release has been carefully selected from the distiller's favorite reserve. Sounds good as well. Barreled at a lower proof. Put a little question mark beside there. And slowly matured to create a bourbon of exceptional quality with notes of vanilla, rich caramel, hints of spice, and a long chocolate orange finish. Wild Turkey 12-year-old distiller's reserve is a showcase of the world-renowned craftsmanship of Jimmy and Eddie Russell and brilliantly reveals the bold and distinct character of wild turkey bourbon. All right, so um, I am not not the expert of wild turkey, but I did know, wait a second, lower barrel entry proof? They go in, in the barrel low anyways. There's this wonderful, wonderful website called rarebreed101.com. All right, um, beautiful, beautiful site. And there they have the nice information here about barrel entry proof at Wild Turkey. Prior to 2004, Wild Turkey distillate was barreled at 107 proof. I think I remember that. It then changed to 110, basically around 2004, 2005. And finally, in 2006, it settled at 115 proof. Hmm. And as we know, either whiskey's proof can increase or decrease based on the rickhouse floor it gauges on. And in order to achieve, achieve a, a batch proof of the average consumer might accept as barrel proof, high proof bourbons from top floors were, un, were necessary. 
This need faded over the years as barrels filled at higher entry proofs reached maturation. All right, so if you put it in the barrel at 115 and it goes down a little bit, well, it might be below the one the, under the 50.5. Uh, 50 um, rare breed, 58.4. Um, yep, this is the one liter travel retail edition of rare breed that is non chilled filtered. Very interesting stuff, by the way. All right, so um, now the very first thing you do notice if you compare the two of these is the 12 year old is darker. Come on, that makes sense. All right, this is maybe. I'm going to say five to eight, probably six to eight years of age. All right, the, the standard. This is the new bottle design we have over here. Exactly the same thing over here. This is uh, um, from the 3rd of April, 2022. According to the little laser stamp on here, this was bottled. And um, let's smell, let's try, let's rate. On the nose. I don't know about you, but I think I could pick wild turkey out of like 20 different bourbons. It's just like, oh, that's wild turkey. It might be the yeast they're using. It might be um, the mash bill they're using. It might be the, um, the still configuration they're using. Wild turkey has a certain aroma that appeals to me. I constantly suggest the wild, the wild turkey 101. I have a booth at many whiskey fairs over here with just American whiskey. We import with N10 together a lot of brands, and I have other brands as well there just to increase the awareness for um, American whiskeys. And um, every, uh, a lot of people go, look, there's Ma Macker's Mark. They don't know how to say Maker's Mark. They say Macker's in German a lot. I say, yes, that's Maker's Mark. Oh, I use that for my cocktails. And I go, well, my suggestion would be the Wild Turkey 101. It's the same price, maybe a euro, maybe a dollar more. And it has more power and a better taste due to the rye versus the weeded mash bill. And um, this is something that I can highly, highly, highly recommend. Now, in the States, Wild Turkey 101 does have a little bit of the, let's say, university problem with it. Over here, we don't use that at the university. We, we, wild turkey is not really unanimous with drinking at the age of 20. It's, we can drink over here with 18. So it's, um, that's Jack Daniels 10, uh, it's Jack Daniels um, number seven or Jim Beam White Label. They are the, 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 the whiskeys you can get at a convenience store. Those are the whiskeys you can get at, a, um, at the supermarket. This is something you have to look for a tiny little bit. Yes, you can find it at supermarkets, but you, I've never seen this. I don't think I've ever seen this at a convenience store, which is a gas station over here. So we can go buy liquor at a gas station. Uh, this is the Campari. Make sure that it doesn't go in that very, 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 very bottom shelf. All right, so it's not going to be the cheapest product on the, on the, on the, on the shelves. It's going to be one of the cheapest products, but I think it's the best value for money out there. Full stop. The Knob Creek nine-year-old, maybe as well, but I like the Wild Turkey 101 better. All right, so now let's... More cherry, more sweetness, as in honey sweetness, and a little bit more of leather. But all the normal things we have here. Um, if I go back here to our Rare Breed 101, he did this as well. He says here... Um, the nose is mature and layered, intense medicinal cherry, fragrant oak, salted caramel, leather, spice citrus, don't get that much, warming baking spice, yep, hints of cedar, nope, and autumn potpourri, nope, nope, this is just good, good goodness, I'm not a big fan of potpourri, that's why, cheers. Mm -hmm. Good mouthfeel, but astringent. There's much, much more oak here than the. There's much more oak here than the normal, 101 has. This was my control whiskey at the beginning. Um, spice, vanilla, oak. Did I mention oak? 
um, a little bit of a cherry in there. Um, leather, honey, caramel. Did I forget anything? Let's see here. He wrote from Rare Breed, I'm sorry, Rare Bird 101, Silky Mouthfeel, Vanilla Spice, Heady Cream Soda. We don't have that over here. Charred Oak, yes. Brown Sugar, yes. Singed Cherry, ooh. Clove Chewing Gum. I have not had clove chewing, chewing gum for 40 years. Um, one of my uncles, I think it was back in PA, he would have it. Uh, I remember that. That was totally different than the red. I liked the big red back then with the cinnamon, but he had the clove, and that was also nice. Nutmeg and light cinnamon. I'm getting more of the cinnamon over here. And it's a long finish. It's a really nice, nice long finish. Um, long and flavorful is what he writes here. Cherry cola. Mm -hmm. Antique leather. Caramelized oak char. Mo molasses tobacco. Yes, blood orange. Yeah, a little bit. Um, faint sassafras and licorice. We don't have sassafras over here either. I loved my sassafras tea as a boy. All right, well, next time I'm in the States, I might have to go on online at Amazon or wherever and try to find some sassafras tea there. Um, very, very nice stuff. I'm giving this a B. I like this a lot. Now, I have a problem with the price. So, but Jason, you got it for a bargain. You didn't even pay 100 euros for it, and other people are asking 170. It's, is it worth that up market? Is it really worth that additional price? As I said, I can get four of these for one of these. Um, I'm going to give this a C minus for value for money. Now, this is not something you need to go out and run out and go buy. If you've never had um, Wild Turkey 101, go buy it. If you've never had Rare Breed, go buy it. If you've never had um, a Russell's Reserve, rye or bourbon, go buy it. We don't get many Russell Reserves over here. Um, and, uh, and a couple other things. They just announced, at least over here in Germany, that there's going to be the Wild Turkey's Master Keep. It's a 10-year-old um, Kentucky Straight bourbon finished in Appleton Estate Jamaican rum casks with 53% ABV for a price of <clears throat> $275. Ouch! Ouch! Wild Turkey Campari, what are you doing there? Oh. Okay, I guess the Master's Keep here... Um, it's just not no longer my my whiskey. This is going to be my whiskey. Even this is not my whiskey. Um, every once in a while, I will try to pick up a Wild Turkey 8. Uh, on auction, I'm not willing to pay more than, I think, 65 euros. The last couple of times I've been outbid, maybe one day I'll get lucky and go buy one, get, be able to buy one. I'm sure 10 years ago, they were like 25 euros. <laughs> so... So that's something that's really, really nice. So a wild turkey with an age statement on there. Very, very brief test of this and go back to that and see how much better it really is. Um, I'm giving this actually a, a B minus for, value, for, 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 um, for taste. I like this. I really like this. B minus. Yeah, it's a B minus. Hmm. A, why haven't you bought it? B, buy it. C, you can buy it if you want. D, you don't need to buy it. F, why was it even made? To be totally honest about my philosophy in life, this is good enough. I actually prefer, and I know I'm going to get a little bit of um, pushback, um, the rare breed, non-chilled filtered, I like less than the standard rare breed. I did blind tasting of that about a year and a half ago. And um, in blind tastings, I actually prefer the rare, the, the, the Eagle, oh, the Eagle Rare, wow, the Wild Turkey 101 over the Rare Breed. Now, I'm in a minority. Very few people think that, but I just think the 101 is perfect, and the 58.4 has a little bit of heat. So, I know other people love that heat, but this is actually where my whiskey is allowed to be. Around that 107 is excellent. All right, going back here to the 12 year old. So, hmm. 
it's silkier it's got a longer finish it's a little bit more of a honey moment going on there sweetness brown sugar is more it does have more wood there's more astringency as well um very very many people say normally if you look at a whiskey uh, sorry if you look at a bourbon um eight years is where i can start get that tipping point of having too much wood 12 is where it's at that plateau and everything after 12 is going to turn into chewing on a piece of wood usually unless some type of precautionary measures have been taken very bottom of the rick house um buffalo trace they have a it's, it's called the last drop i think they actually have a refrigerated cooled uh section of the warehouse where they can store whiskeys papi van Winkel. And other things 20 30 even maybe even 50 years in the future we'll see um if you leave it on the heat of kentucky you put it in a barrel with angel share of over two percent 50 years later you have nothing you have an empty barrel and so you need to work on that temperature the conditions and the um, angel share and so and don't forget we're using the heaviest char char four here we're using um new american oak barrels and for 12 years in that new oak not to absorb too much of the tannins too much of the astringency i would like to know i'm just sidetracked again i would like to know um wild turkey are they um supplied by uh international safe company and if so are they doing the same thing wilderness trail uses for some of their products those premium superior um, barrels that have 28 uh, month um, outdoor seasoning of the wood before they turn them into the the staves um, that would help as well to have a longer aging period for the whiskeys all right what is your favorite wild turkey product is it a russell is it the rare breed is it the wild turkey 101 is the 12 year old is it a master keep what is your favorite, favorite wild turkey company or product here from the company Campari? So wild turkey is Italian, people. All right. So it belongs to an Italian company. Isn't that weird? So your Four Roses belongs to a Japanese company, uh, Wilderness Trail, and um, here, wild, uh, wild turkey, um, Italian uh, bullet with Dickel is um, English, British, Diageo. So what was the other foreign company has there? Oh, yes. Um, now we could talk about other places with Peno Ricard. Um, they have the majority of Rabbit Hole now and other companies as well that are not American owned. Oh, well, that's the bourbon landscape at the moment. Thank you very much for watching, liking, subscribing, and hopefully you'll one day be able to get your hands on a Wild Turkey 12. Rare and exotic whiskeys here from Whiskey Jason. Bye-bye.